Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It is Saturday, September 30th, and there's just a day to go before the government shuts down. I can't believe we're doing this again, but here we are. Uh, I will promise to uh, put something up on the website about what happens when the government shuts down. I'm going to try to do that right away so you guys can go check that out. It's not good. Let's just be clear. There's nothing good about this. And we hope that it is short-lived and whatever shutdown occurs and that as few people as possible are impacted by it. It's just self-inflicted wound. Bad, bad, bad Congress. Bad, very bad. Okay. Um, I need to um, go back to other bad behavior also. Remember the 1930s, Mark? It was such a Okay, wait a minute. We don't remember the 1930s, but we have a guest today who will help you understand why it is so important to look back because, as they say, history does not repeat itself, but it certainly does rhyme. We are delighted to give you a snippet of the interview that we conducted with Diana Henriquez. She is the New York Times bestselling author. One of her great books was The Wizard of Lies. She also is a friend of this show and has been on a few different times. She's got a new book out and it was just gripping. Only I could tell you this, but I'm going to, you got to trust me, gang. Taming the Street is the name of the book. And here's the subtitle. The Old Guard, The New Deal, and FDR's Fight to Regulate American Capitalism. I know that you think that sounds boring, but it is not boring because Diana is an amazing storyteller. She's got great characters. It's very rare when you can think of a time where so much was going on in the universe, in financial markets, and one person has been able to basically take four different characters and tell the story. It's really gripping. It's amazing. So right now, if you would like to sign up for the Jill on Money live subscription service, you will be able to see this entire interview. But today we give you a little teaser episode. So this is uh, me and Diana Henriquez. We're talking about how the period of the roaring 20s and financial markets has a little bit of an echo to today's crypto craze. Here is the first part of my interview with Diana Henriquez. Can you try to put us in the frame of mind of what it felt like then and use a similar period today to try to help some of our younger viewers understand the frenzy that was going on in the late 20s? Look at the cryptocurrency market. And pretend those are stocks and bonds. Financial markets were largely unregulated. They said they were self-regulated, but you know the, the rules were not as strong as the men who enforced the rules or didn't enforce them. You took everything on faith. If you were an ordinary investor, like some of the young people who got into cryptocurrency, you believed what you were told. You believed the hype. That was really all you had to go on because no one was required to actually give you any documentation that had to be true. So you you went on faith. And if it turned out to be bogus or if it turned out to be a fraud, you had very little recourse um, because that was the way the market works. It worked for the big guys. One of the biggest problems in crypto today, you know this as well as I, it's a thin market. It's very easily manipulated by the giant whales that flow through it. Well, same deal, 1920s, Wall Street, uh, the big whales, the, the giant investors would form pools. They'd team up together, four or five, six of them, put a couple hundred million dollars together, and they'd drive up the price of the stock, wash sales, all sorts of fictitious trading, and they'd make it look like a huge rally in that stock. And when the public got hooked, they dumped the stock. And along the way, they would bribe newspaper reporters to write the puff pieces they needed on command. And some of them wrote checks and investigators later found up, wound up with the canceled checks. So it was a world in which that dealt in hyperbole, uh, hoopla, unreliable information and was easily manipulated by the giants It did not serve the little people. So if you want to know what all of America's Wall Street looked like in the 1920s before FDR, look at the crypto market today. It is an unregulated market. Did the vast majority of Americans participate in that unregulated market? Or is it sort of at the very end where they kind of get sucked in at the top of the bubble? 
at the very height, uh, mm-hmm. a small percentage of American uh, Americans invested directly or indirectly in the stock market. There were investment trusts, mutual funds of that day. So there were some indirect investors who were ordinary average Americans. But it was late in the bubble mm-hmm. in the 1920s when you know the shoeshine boy and the and the gal in the beauty shop started following the stock market. And I've read deeply about this, the phenomenon that everybody was buying stocks is really Hollywood fiction, but everyone was following stocks. Everyone was consumed by the stock market news and the and the tales of, of killings that were made and the and the profiles of the buccaneers and the swashbucklers who were making those fortunes. So the stock market did occupy a chunk of mental real estate in our culture that it had never occupied before. Okay, if you would like to get more of that interview, you'll have to shell out 35 bucks for Jill on Money Live. You can check out great bonus content like this, which lives behind our paywall, Jill on Money Live. Just go to our website, jillonmoney.com, and you can join. $35 a whole year, all that great bonus content and quarterly live webinars. Come on, it's a deal. All right. We are so grateful. Whatever you decide to do, you can always sign up for the free weekly newsletter. Give you a little something free also. All right. Put your hands metaphorically on someone's back. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. 